InstaSpin FOC Launch Pad and Booster Pack Training Series, Part 5, High, Higher, and Highest Speeds. To this point, we've only been using Lab 5B, which allows us to tune the speed and the current controllers. Now we want to look at how fast we can run the motor, and for that we want to experiment with the overmodulation techniques. So for this, you're going to want to load Project 10A into CoComposer Studio and rebuild this with your user.h settings. I've already done that. So I can simply copy the dot out that has been built from my Project Lab 10A. From its build location into the web app, I can simply delete the existing app program and rename and launch the GUI. So Lab 10 comes up with the modulation index set to 1.33, which is the maximum that we're allowing. Um, so in the user's guide, the quick start guide, you'll see that we have a, a few different settings. Let's go ahead and change this to 1.00. So this is the peak of the sine wave. This is going to give you uh, your pure sinusoidal. And let's see how fast we can run this. And you'll notice I put my gain settings uh, back to what I tuned it for in uh, step three at low speed. And let's go ahead and increase the acceleration. And this is a 4,000 RPM motor, but let's see if we can run faster. So the max speed is you know, almost 4,800 RPMs with this modulation. And you can see that the modulation index here, this sets a limit. And what this limit is, is the VS. So you'll notice that we're applying the maximum VS. And the S stands for squared. So this is our VQ squared plus VD squared, and then the square root. So this will set that maximum amount of voltage that is allowed onto the system. So if we slow this down a bit, we can change the modulation. You want to make sure that if you are going to change the modulation while the motor is running, that you're not near that boundary. You don't want anything uh, bad to happen here. So let's try the SVPWM. So this has a modulation index of 1.15. So we're going to allow another 15% essentially of voltage across, and let's see how fast we can run now. So let's again try the 5,000. And uh, we're able to hit that, and we're actually oscillating a little bit. So our speed controller is probably a little too tight. We'll go ahead and tune that a little bit. And let's see if we can go faster. So let's try 6,000. So you'll see with this modulation, we went up to a value, uh, a full 1.15 allowed, which is giving us about 5,400 RPMs. And again, this is unloaded. If you load the machine, uh, it's probably going to reduce some speed here as it maximizes the torque capability. So let's see if we can go faster. So again, I'm just going to lower the speed without turning it off. And let's go up to our full modulation. So our full modulation should allow us to go even faster. Let's try 6,000. Not quite. So with our full modulation, we're able to hit about 5,700 RPMs. You can see we've maxed out on our VS, getting some resonance from the motor. It's kind of vibrating because it has that zip tie again. So we're able to hit 5,700 RPMs, but we can go even faster. Again, I'm going to just reduce the speed here. And how we can go faster than even allowing just the maximum voltage is to go into what we call field weakening. And this is where we actually inject some current along the D-axis to reduce the effect of the flux or the back EMF that the motor is producing. So this can reduce that back EMF voltage and allow us to go to even higher speeds but it's at a trade-off. You're going to get a reduction in overall torque capability to get higher speeds. And this is very useful to properly size a motor. So if you only have certain times when you need your motor to go especially fast or over the rated speed, 
Um, this is a, it's a good time to use field weakening because this allows you to use uh, your motor in the most efficient way and choose a motor of the right size for the time that it spins in the most area of its operation at lower speeds and higher torque and only go to higher speeds with that same sized motor when absolutely necessary to do that you have to spend more power you put more current in and you're going to get a reduction of torque so good application to think about this for is washing machines where you need a lot of torque to do agitation with a, a machine full of water and clothes but after the clothes or after the water has been uh, taken out of the system, you want to run it very, very fast to spin the water out of the clothing. And this is a very good application for field weakening. So field weakening is supported in lab number nine. So I'm going to have to go rebuild lab number nine to play with field weakening a little bit. Okay, so I've loaded project lab nine, which allows me to do field weakening, um, onto the launch pad and controlling the booster pack. And you can see here I'm running at 200 RPMs. You'll notice a couple things. One is this time when I loaded, I got a, a little graphic saying it's still loading. Haven't been able to quite figure that one out yet. Um, it, is, it has loaded properly onto the launch pad and booster pack. So sometimes I think the image just doesn't render out. But um, uh, it is working just fine. Second thing is that in Lab 9, you'll notice that the modulation is at 1.00. And Lab 9 comes before Lab 10 and doesn't allow you to change the modulation. So of course you can go mix these two projects and add in the components that let you change the modulation in 10 back into 9. So for now we're limited to the 1.00 in this lab and this is the peak of the sine wave. But you can do the field weakening uh, with the 1.15 or even the 1.33. So as an example let's again um, go up to a higher acceleration and get up to a top speed. If I recall correctly it was uh, maybe 4,500, 4,700 RPM. So about 4,800 RPM. So just to show you what manual field weakening does, let's go ahead and do that. And there's a limit set in user.h which will um, set the maximum uh, field weakening that you can do. And this is a safety limit that you can update for your particular motor. And what you want to do is just start adding some negative ID, always negative, for field weakening. So putting in a little field weakening of 0.3 amps, you'll see that my speed increases up to the 5,000 I've requested. So let's actually make our command even higher. Let's try to get to 6,000. So we're right around 5,000, and let's keep adding some current. Let's see, we went up to 5,100. 5,200. Five hundred. There's our six thousand. So it's taking about one point eight amps, and we can even go a little higher. Let's command more. So let's go right up to our limit. So with almost two amps, we can get about sixty three hundred RPMs with our modulation set to only one point zero zero. So now let's see what the auto field weakening does. So for this, let's uh, slowly change this current back towards zero. You want to do this in a controlled manner. You don't want to just uh, switch it off fully, or you can have some regenerative effects. So slowly reduce the current back to zero. And now we can try the auto field weakening. So the auto field weakening is going to add this ID as necessary up until the limit. So if we turn this on, you can see the ID increases and it clamps all the way to 2 because it's still trying to reach the 7,000 RPMs and it's not able to. When you remove the auto field weakening, you'll notice that the ID reference remains. So you also you need to take this out manually and again do it in a controlled fashion. 